This is the homework helper for Chapter 5, Section 3 in the 7th grade workbook, Functions, Tables, and Graphs. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the first two questions. They're identical in nature. They're asking us to find the output for each input, meaning they want us to fill out the input-output table. So as you can see, what they've done here is they've given us a list of inputs, in other words, values they want us to change x into, and we're supposed to figure out what the y then would result when we change that x. We're going to go ahead and take a look at number two. I think you can do number one on your own because it's pretty simple. It's going to end up being the graph of a line. Not much complicated to think about there. But at number two, we've got this squared thing, which might present a problem if we don't think about it in the right nature. So rule here says I'm going to change x into negative two and solve, change x into two and solve, change x into three and to solve, and change x into four and solve. So I've got negative two times negative two squared for the first one negative 2 times 2 squared for the next one, negative 2 times 3 squared for the next one, and negative 2 times 4 squared for the last one. Well remember when I take a square value that means I'm multiplying it by itself. And so when I take this negative and multiply it by itself I'm doing a negative times a negative which is going to change into a positive. So this is negative 2 times negative 2 which is positive 4 times negative 2 again, which is negative 8. In the next one, 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4, times a negative 2 in front is also negative 8. 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, times a negative 2 in front is negative 18. And the last one, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, times negative 2 is negative 8. And that's how you fill out an input-output table. Now, questions three and four doing the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at question number three here. We're going to start off and we're going to fill in the out input output table the exact same way we did here in question number two a minute ago. The only difference is there's one additional column where it says ordered pair. The ordered pair column is where you're going to combine the x and the y values to write a coordinate, which of course now as you can see we're then going to graph over here on this coordinate grid. So the first one says I'm going to do y equals x divided by 4. So I'm going to take whatever my x value is and divide by 4. So the first one I'm going to take negative 4 and divide by 4. Second one down I'm going to take 0 and divide by 4. Next one down I'm going to take 2 and divide by 4. And last one I'm going to take 4 and divide by 4. Well, negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. 0 divided by 4 is 0. 2 divided by 4 is a half. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. And again, I'm going to conjoin these points x, comma, y. So negative 4, negative 1, 0, comma, 0, 2, comma, 1 half, and 4, comma, 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and come over here to my coordinate grid and graph these. Remember the first number x always represents something on the x-axis, that's the one that runs left right. The second number always represents something on the y-axis, that's the one that goes up and down. So negative 4 comma negative 1 means I'm going to go to negative 4 on the x-axis and negative 1 on the y-axis and I'll pull my fingers together where those meet and that's this point over here. Next one, 0, 0 is probably the easiest one. That's right at the crossbars. 2, comma, 1 half means I'm going to go over to 2 on the x-axis and to 1 half on the y-axis, so halfway between 0 and 1. And again, I'll pull my fingers together where do those meet. That's this point right there. And the last one, 4, comma, 1 means I'm going to go over to 4 on the x-axis and up to 1 on the y-axis figure out where those meet, which is right there, connect my points, and there's the graph of the function y equals x divided by 4. You'll do the same thing in question number 4. Notice how the function starts off with x squared, so make sure you treat that just like we did back up there in question number 2. It will not be the graph of a line, so when you graph this, if you get a line, you did something wrong. 